Hello and welcome back to my World of Warcraft casual let's play. This is episode 4 and we got a lot to do today so let's get going. Alright, we just made it to Stormwind at the end of the last episode and there's a lot of things to check out and get set up and then we're going to head off and do some quests. One of the first things is to change our gear. Now, we've been stuck in this outfit since we started, and I don't like it. <laughs> Doesn't look very good. So we're going to go to visit the transmog guy. Transmog short for transmogrification. We're going to change this ugly outfit into something that looks prettier. Now, I've played the game for a long time, so I've collected a lot of other pieces of armor that I can change the appearance into. Uh, so you might not have a lot... Uh, when you first start out because you know you haven't collected much you have to collect a piece of armor to be able to transmog something into it later on so let's go see what I got let's make myself look a little bit more presentable uh I went right by him didn't I? oh no here it is I haven't been here in a long time all right now here we got two guys we got the void storage guy which is just a way to, to store really old things that you're not going to use uh, and this guy, transmog my gear. Alright, oh, yeah, that's right, this character does, oh, there's some things. I don't have all of my stuff unlocked on this character because she's very low level, so. First thing I like to do is get rid of the helmet. I don't like a helmet at all. I don't think there's anything here that I really like, except maybe an eye patch, that's kind of cool. But no. Nope. We'll go with the nothing helmet. Uh, shoulders, eh. maybe that, cape, well let's pick our chest piece first, see what kind of outfit we want. Oh, my dragon stalker set. Why didn't I have the shoulders for that? Hmm. Alright, so I can't wear that whole set yet, so let's just find something that's not horribly ugly. That's kind of a cool shirt. That's pretty too, but we're going to go with something purpley. Because we have purple on. Alright, let's go with that. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have any pants that are going to match it. Eh. Where's my dragon? So I got the dragon soccer pants and shirt. Maybe we can work with that. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I'm going to have the boots. Yep, I do got the boots. Nice. I don't have the shoulders. I don't get it, but... Whatever. I can't transmog my belt. Oh, the dragons. Oh, they do have the shoulders. Look at that. Alright, we need a cape to match. That's kind of cool. That's better. A little bit understated, not too flashy. And is there a bow that we'd rather use? Use this bright pink one. Mm, doesn't quite match. I don't have all my bows here. We'll stick with that one. Alright, good enough. We look better. Let's go. This is a set from, I believe this is from Ubers. Upper Black Rock Spire. I'm not entirely sure. Somewhere in Black Rock Mountain is where you can get this set of gear. It takes a little while to farm up, but it's a really cool outfit. Now, the next place we're going, because we still have to make our character look better... Uh, we're going to go to the barber shop, and here you can change your hair, your markings, all kinds of options to customize. But I did a long quest line that I, I think I told you about in the last video about um, Taronda Whisperwind and how she transformed into the, the Night Warrior, which unlocked a new customization feature for me. So let's check it out. First thing is it's a skin color, this one. It's kind of dark and creepy. So let's go with that. We can even change our face. Imagine if you could walk into a barbershop whenever you wanted and change your face. That would be interesting. Let's go with the angry looking face because it goes with the Night Warrior. What about color? You want to stay with the purple? Yeah, let's stay with that. Maybe change the markings a little. 
There's just no markings. That looks good. All right, there we go. Ooh, and they got an achievement called Shave and the Haircut. All right, now we are Night Warrior Elf. Oh, yeah. All right, so what else do we have to do? We did our transmog, and we did the customization. We have to do some work on our professions. We don't have to, but we're going to because I like doing professions. So I'm going to go over here, talk to the fishing trainer. Excuse me one second while I grab a drink. There, that's better. Alright, this is your fishing daily quest giver. Hitting a walleye. Bring her eight hardened walleye. Alright, we'll go do that. There's a little lake that we get to go to and do that. We're also going to pick up the cooking daily. Which is over this way. I wish I could fly right now to give you an aerial picture of how Stormwind is laid out. It can seem really confusing until you, you get the big picture of it and then it all makes sense. Um, Stormwind has a nice, easy to follow layout where some cities, looking at you, Orgrimmar, are a nightmare. All right, we need to pick up apples for him. So if you look at the quest, you see all these, or look at the map rather, see all these blue circles? They're showing us where the apples are. Basically, where there's a tree with apples in it, there's probably an apple on the ground. There's some right here. So let's grab these. We need to get 12 of them. But we're going to head over towards the lake where we're going to go fishing. And we'll work on both of our quests at once. This building right here, this is the... Uh, you'd think I would know what it was called. The stockades. <laughs> There's a dungeon in there. Um, I spent a lot of time, and that's a great place to farm some early low-level cloth materials. Uh, so yeah, we go in there at higher levels and just run it by yourself, killing everything, harvesting the cloth, resetting it, doing it again for hours. Oops. Whew. I was lucky. I thought I was going to fall right into the canal. All right, I have some apples. So we're going to try to work our way toward the lake to fish. Picking up any apples on the way. Going to take our motorbike just a little bit faster. And the lake, I believe the lake is over on the other side of Old Town. We'll find out. That's where we're going to head. And this guy right here he wanders around the city, but he sells toys. There's some, some fun things he has, so if you see him, I think I've got all these. Um, if you see him, talk to him. Buy some cool toys. They're fun. They don't do anything. They don't give you any powers or whatnot, but they have some fun toys. And toy collecting is, is another big part of the game. There's a whole... Uh, collection tab, if I can find it. Shift P. Um, these are all the toys that I have and all the ones that I don't. So, there's a lot of toys to collect. Some of them drop off rares. Some are from achievements. Some are from raid bosses. You know, you can get toys anywhere. And there's lots of them. I know there's apples up there, but let's head towards the lake. Sure, we'll find some apples just as we go. Oh, Stormwind, you're so big. Let's grab these apples. You know, this game is... Um, maybe I'm just a highly suggestible person, because just doing a quest to pick up these little cartoon apples, I really want an apple now. And that's not good. You shouldn't be that <laughs> suggestible from video games. But apples are good for you, so I might go have one anyway. Alright, the lake is over there. Almost there. Someday we'll do a, a tour of Stormwind. But 
Mostly just talk about it as we come up in places we need to visit. It's a great city. It's changed a lot over the years. This is not what it looks like in the classic version. Why isn't there a bridge there? There's a bridge here. Duh. There we go. Could just jump across the canal, but sometimes it's hard. You can't just jump over the wall to get back up on the other side. So. Alright, and this is the lake you want to use. Let's find a nice spot to fish. It's always important to find a nice spot so you feel happy while you're fishing. I know, that sounds ridiculous, but whatever. Alright, so we're going to put fishing on our mouse button bar to make it faster. We're just going to fish. Now you can get a good look at this outfit. Is that not cool? I love this outfit. It's very bright and purple. Most of my characters are dressed in somber colors and, and unobtrusive looking outfits, but not my hunters. My hunters tend to wear the bright purple set. I generally don't like to stick out like a sore thumb, but every once in a while you, you find an outfit that just screams, wear me. I want to be obnoxious. Ooh, that is a mad looking face. I might change that. It's a little too angry looking. Uh. All right, now we have to catch eight hardened walleye here. Um, this might take a while because my fishing level is pretty low. So I'm going to do one thing to help it. I'm going to equip my fishing pole and use a bobble. These bobbles are fishing lures which boost your fishing skill a little bit. And this one only increases it by three, I think. By three, yeah. But later on you can get lures that will give you a lot of a lot more bonus points to your skill while you're fishing. Alright, but what I'm going to do, because this could take 15-20 minutes to do this, I'm not going to make you watch it. I'm going to pause the video here, and I'll be back as soon as we have all of our fish. So, be right back. Alright, we are back. Finally got all of my fish. So I can equip my bow, and let's go turn in these quests. Now, this fishing and cooking quest, these are daily quests. And what that means is you can do them, as you would expect, once a day, every day. And there's a cooking and fishing daily in the three main alliance towns. One in Darnassus, there's a set here in Stormwind, and a set in Ironforge. If you really wanted to, you could go do them all every day. And back when these were current and relevant, there was a, a reason for doing so. You get a lot of materials that you needed for cooking, um get a lot of, of reward bags for fishing that could have some cool stuff in it. So there was a point to doing them, but for now it's just because we're here and I like my profession, so I figured we'd do them. But let's turn them in and see if we get anything good. Here's our fishing trainer. All right, what do we get? What do we get? Let's see. A bag of fishing goodies. And we got some strangle kelp, a skull, and one gold. Well, you know, whatever. We also got a point in our fishing, so that's good. Let's go to the cooking trainer, turn that quest in. And now, especially because I just did all that fishing, I've got a lot of stuff to cook. So we're going to cook what we can. We're going to go visit the recipe vendor and see how high we can get our cooking skill before we go off questing. This is one reason why I like to quest by myself. Um, I have a friend that I've played WoW with for over 10 years, and he is one of the best questing people that I know. He quests very quickly, right? Very, uh... Sorry, distracted with my cooking skill. He's very good at questing, right? Because he can knock out tons of quests really, really quick. And and get them all done in a very efficient way. I like to stop and, and pick flowers and fish and do cooking and he's like, nope, come on, we're questing. Um, and it's great whenever you want to quest and level fast, but <laughs> I get so sidetracked by all the little stuff that it just, it doesn't work out so well. Alright, now what I realized is when I was over in Darnassus, I did not 
pick up the recipes uh, for some of the fish. So, yeah, we'll deal with that another time. I know there's some in Goldshire. There is a vendor here in Stormwind that sells tons of recipes, and we will pick those up uh, when we come back from our questing. But for now, we gotta go do something. So, we're gonna empty our bags. What is that daily quest? Oh, a Blinktron. Blinktron 5000, we're not gonna get that one. Um, you may see quests like that, the blue exclamation point, that's a daily quest. If you see one for Blingtron, um, I think now we're at the 7000 model. There's a 5000, a 6000, possibly a 7000. So look for the, the higher number. Because you can only do it once a day per account. You can't go to your other characters and do it. So make sure you, you try to get the best one you can. Alright, let's get rid of some of this stuff we don't need. Ooh, there's, oh, we don't need those pants. Uh, don't need those gloves. I'm just gonna sell all these things. Alright, that looks good. Repair our gear. And let's go quest. There's a little quest around town. See, I'm ignoring some of these because they're just silly little quests. And I don't feel like doing them. I'd rather get right into the thick of things. So, we're gonna drive ourselves. From Stormwind out to Goldshire. I'm trying not to run into walls because I do that a lot. And start questing. Now Goldshire is part of the, the start zone questing for new characters that would be if you pick the human race, you'd start out here. Alright. And we did the Night Elf start zone. So normally um, we would skip this because this stuff would be too low level. But with the new dynamic scaling these quests will be our level, so we can do them. And they're fun, they're easy, they're really closely grouped together. Uh, so it's a nice body of quests to do if you want to quest real quick. So let's do that. Now we could go into Northshire, which is where the very, very start zone for the human race. But I think those quests might be capped at level 10, so there's no point to doing those. So let's just go here as Goldshire. And get going. Now Goldshire is a famous little town in the game. It's very small, but a lot of people seem to hang out here for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, but generally, of course there's nobody here now, right? Because, okay, now I look like I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> normally there's a lot of people out here, and they'll be doing duels, and a lot of uh, shenanigans happen here in the inn. Goldshire Inn is famous on certain servers, like Moonguard. Don't go there unless you're a very brave soul. Um, but yeah, Gold, Goldshire is a place. Does guy have any recipes? No. Alright, so we picked up our first quest. Let's just go, we're going to go around collecting all the quests that we see. And we're just going to go do them real quick. Now, he's got a quest called Hero's Call. Whenever you see a hero's call quest, they're really pointing you towards uh, where you need to be. They're breadcrumb, breadcrumb quests that tell you to go somewhere. Uh, this... Yeah, we're not going to do that quest because that leads to a whole different zone that I don't feel like going to. So we'll leave that quest alone. Pick up this one. How are you? A two. Have a good one. And... But we don't need fresh iron. Trade supplies. See if he's got any cooking recipes that we need. He's got long jaw. That's a good one. And that's a good one. Let's learn these real quick. Oh, brilliant small fish. You can cook some of them. And then 16. Alright, well that should get us to 50 and then we can do the next recipe. So let's go do that real quick. Because, you know, distracting, cooking, fishing, it's fun. Right, so we're going to come in here. We could have just made a cooking fire out there or used one of the other fires outside, but the cooking trainer is right here, so this is more advantageous. I'm going to cook up some raw, brilliant small fish. Now, when you cook it, you see it restores 94 health over 18 seconds. A lot of foods you're going to cook when you eat eat them they'll give you a bonus to a certain stat or make you regenerate health faster something like that uh, this very low level stuff doesn't give you any bonus but 
We're just cooking it to level our fishing, not really to eat, so that's fine. And now we've hit level 50. So as long as we're done there, we can learn the recipe for Longjaw Mud Snapper. And we have 17 of those, so let's cook them. And then we'll talk to the trainer and see if he has anything else to teach us. Oh, back. Sorry about that. I was getting a drink. Forgot to turn my microphone back on. <laughs> Alright, our cooking will be at level 70. Which is great. Talk to the trainer. Look, he's got some new recipes we can learn. Alright. That is done and dusted for now. Let's go quest. I know that I haven't worked on the leatherworking profession yet. Mainly because we need to collect a lot more leather before we can even do anything worthwhile. So, a lot of monsters out here. There's a lot of um, bears, there's a lot of wolves, a lot of things we can skin. So as we quest out here, we'll collect a lot more leather. And then, we can get something accomplished. But for now, we're going to go to the Fargo Deep Mine. We have three quests to do there, and there's a whole series of little quests around the outside of it, so... It's a good place to go. Oh, there's a spider. Let's kill him. We're also going to tame a wolf for our DPS pet and a bear for our tank pet. So we'll keep our eyes peeled for those. They're cows, but unfortunately you cannot tame a cow. I would totally have a cow pet if you could, but you can't. Alright, so one of our quests is to get some stuff off these kobolds. Kobolds, however you want to say it. So let's kill him. And we got one of each quest item. Gold dust and a large candle. Very handy. There's a boar. You can tame boars. Boars are traditional tank pets. There are some cool looking ones in the game, but these are boring, so we're not going to bother with that. So there's a kobold. And some more gold dust. He didn't have anything. Crazy kobolds. Alright, now I'm going this way instead of towards the mine because I want to pick up these quests out here. Because there's there's a lot of running back and forth between these, these two little farms and the mines. So if you get all the quests going at once, you can kind of more efficiently run the path. Alright, she wants us to kill Princess, which is this giant piggy over here. And, you know, presumably you can tame it, but even though it's really big there, while we're killing it now, if you tamed it, it would be little like these ones, so there's no point to doing that. Alright, that's done. Now, in the olden days, running through here, sometimes when you put your mouse over a watermelon, there would be a cogwheel over it, like you could, you could interact with it, and you could pick them. And... Nobody believes me, but I know I used to do that way back in the day. I am convinced of it. <laughs> but every time I mention it, people are like, no, you could never do that. So maybe I need to ask Blizzard to verify. Or maybe we can find out when Classic WoW goes live. Maybe you'll be able to pick the watermelons again. Yeah, it's one of those weird memories I have that I can't tell if it's actual memory or my imagination. So, if you know, please leave me a comment below, because I'd like to know if, I, if I'm remembering that right. Alright, now before we go down into the mine, which is right there, we're going to go do this quest over here. And get this chain going, because one of the, uh, the quests over here, well, it used to be in the mine, they actually changed it, and the mob's up top now, but it's just the, the pattern I'm used to doing. You do the two farms, and then hit the mines last. Alright, so we have two quests over here. This is a daily quest. I think he just trades you water for apples or something like that. You need something? Yeah, you trade, give him a water and he gives you an apple. And you can do that a million times if you want. But there's no point to doing that. Alright, so Billy wants us to get some 
boar meat. Tender boar meat from these boars. So, that should be pretty simple. And the added benefit is as a skinner, you can skin them all. So we need a lot of leather. There's two. Need two more. And one more. Yes, I know I'm walking right through the vines, and it's not very good role playing, but we can just let that go. Alright, so pie for Billy. So we've got that, but what we need to do is take the boar meat back over to the other farm, because she's going to cook a pie, and then we bring that back to Billy, and then, you know, it just goes back and forth, back and forth. So. Let's get that out of the way. And there's usually a bear spawn around here somewhere. I was hoping to find him. Oh, there he is. Let's tame the bear. So we're going to tame him. First thing we have to do is dismiss this one. Because you can't tame a pet if you already have a pet out. And there's the bear. So we're going to get as far as we, away as we can. And then hit tame beast. All right, and it's a channeled spell. So you have to be able to complete the cast before either the animal kills you or something else happens. And there we go. There is our bear. Alright, so we need a name for our bear, because we can't just call him Bear. Although I do tend to call bears Bear Bear Bear. I don't know why. Maybe it's from Bear in the Big Blue House when the kids were little. But <laughs> I just call him Bear Bear Bear. Alright, there's that quest done. See you later. Right, now I gotta bring the pie back to Billy. Alright, now our bear has some... Uh, different abilities from our cat pet. So let's go into our pet's spell tab. We've got dash, just leave, that's automatically set on. Growl, that's on the bar, so we need to be able to turn that on and off as needed. Um, claw, you know, the, all the basic attacks. The spirit beasts that we'll be capturing later in the game have things like resurrect or heroism, which is a, a big buff. Um, there's a lot of other very special abilities that certain pets can have. That can be useful even in a raid environment, so we'll definitely be grabbing those. But they're a long way down the road. For now, I'm going to go with the bear because he's a standard tank pet. Even though you could take any pet that you can tame and turn it into a tank pet if you wanted to. So, there is that. But I'm a traditionalist. I have to play it old school. If you want a tank pet, you get a bear or a boar. And that's just how it goes. All right, Billy, here's your pie. Tell us where the necklace is. All right, let's go get the necklace. All right, the necklace for for Aunt Bernice or Aunt Bernie is up here on this dude. Yeah, up at the top there he is, Mr. Goldtooth. All right, there's a little kobold in the way. Let's kill him. And Goldtooth used to be down in the middle of the mine, which is why you do all the farm quests first. Otherwise, you'd go scouting through the mine and do all that, and then get this quest and be like, Oh, I have to go all the way back in the middle of the mine to get that? That's terrible. So, Blizzard put him up here instead. So you don't have to go in the mine. And there's the necklace. Alright, now we have to do this mine stuff. We have to get a little bit more gold dust, a little bit more large candles, and scout through the mine. Right, yeah. And we'll get credit for scouting when we get to a certain point within the mine. We'll flag us as having done it. But it's not a long run. And these kobolds are really good to kill. They have a lot of cloth. Uh, obviously the quest items, but cloth is, is a thing. It used to be more important when you could train uh, first aid so you can make bandages out of the cloth to heal yourself with which was kind of nice but they changed all that now so you know I don't know why Blizzard keeps changing these things I liked doing bandages now you can still make bandages but only if you have the tailoring profession which I certainly don't alright so we got the credit for scouting through the mine we just need two more gold dust and then we'll be done with these quests Uh, 
one more. These mines can be a little confusing. It's really easy to get turned around. So don't go any farther in than I have to. Because I don't like getting lost in mines. And I am very, very good at getting lost in mines. Probably one of the best. <laughs> so let's just get out of there. All right, we got to turn Aunt Bernice's necklace in. And then we can go back to Goldshire, the little town, and turn in the quest there. You see, that's a nice, easy, rather compact pile of questing. That should get us a level. And I just realized I don't have my experience bar on my screen, so I redid my UI, but that's okay. Hello. Safe travel. All right, and we got some gloves that might be an upgrade. Let's check them out. Yep, they're not great, but they're better. Oh, wait. Yeah, those have Agi Stan. We'll use those. All right, so now we have to go see uh, the people in town and turn in the quests. But we'll be coming back to that farm in just a minute for the next quest. Oops, I think we aggroed a spider, but we're just going to keep going. You can just keep running past mobs if you accidentally aggro them, although you can get stunned and dismounted, or at least slowed. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to stop and kill him or just try to keep running. And there's town. Alright, let's turn in our quests and see what's next. What can I do for you? See you later. Okay, he's happy. This guy, Marshall Dugan, he's so serious. He's always very, very serious. That guy does not know how to let loose and have fun. And this guy. You need something? Oh, look, we leveled. We have a new ability, Freezing Trap. Talk about that in a second. Right, but he wants us to talk to Maybell McClure at the McClure Vineyards. So let's go do that. Then we have to go to the other mine. Alright, freezing trap. Here's my spell book. Freezing trap is right here. Now, alright, original hunters, trapping was a big part of the class. Uh, had a lot of utility, excuse me, a lot of utility. And they could do things like um, freeze a mob for crowd control. Because if you had like a big group of monsters and say one was particularly, you know, powerful and you wanted to, to not engage him, you could throw a freezing trap on him, sort of turn him into an ice block. Uh, then they had, over the years, there's been all different kinds of traps. There was a snake trap, there was um, a, a slowing trap, a fire trap, so all kinds of different things. Uh, traps aren't what they used to be. They're not quite as useful. Um, very niche settings, uh, some PvP times are pretty good, certain raid mechanics, but in general, meh. you know, I don't use them too much, because they're not what they used to be, but that's okay. And now we have to do, all right, we talked to that girl Mabel, and she's actually in love with uh, Tommy Joe Stonefield, because what we have here, I should have even mentioned this before, we have the Stonefields and the McClures. All right, and they're they're warring families, like the uh, the McCoys. So it's a play on that, and it's kind of cute. And so we have Mabel and Tommy, the Hatfields and McCoys, Stonefields and McClures. So Tommy McClure over here, the Tommy Stonefield, and Mabel McClure are having they're dating, but they shouldn't be because you know they're warring families, but they don't care. They're in love, so we work with them. Do some quests for them with Grandma Stonefield to try and get the two lovers united. It's kind of a, a twist on Romeo and Juliet versus the Hatfields and McCoys. So it's a cute little quest line if you want to read it all. Alright, so Grandma has an idea. 
she wants us to um, talk to Willem, William Pestle in town and see if he can come up with maybe a potion, an invisibility potion for Mabel, so she can sneak out from under her father's watchful gaze and go spend some much-needed time with her lover, Tommy Stonefield. So we're going to help make that happen because, you know, we're all about defying the parents or something. I don't know. But <laughs> that's just what we're going to do. Because if we don't do it, we don't get any experience. So whatever. True love must conquer all, I suppose. All right, we're going to drive back to town real quick. Talk to William Pestle. And he's going to send us on a quest to get some of the materials that he needs to make this great potion for Mabel. So that's the point of all this, if you were wondering. We have the inn. Let's talk to William. And Grandma's note, and he says, yes, I can do that. But go get me some stuff. All right, so we're going to do this quest. Uh, <laughs> we have to go kill. This is our introduction to Murlocs. Right, the first quest where we're going to deal with Murlocs. Murlocs are... I think they're adorable. They are so cute. I have a Murloc plushie, and I just, I love Murlocs. But as as a character and having to kill them, they're, they're not a lot of fun because they swarm you. So you attack one, and then five more of them come running at your face, uh, and they seem to respawn really fast and out of nowhere. So getting swarmed by Murlocs is, is a thing, and there are lots of memes about it, lots of videos, and lots of... You know, Murlocs are just a big thing. But there's not too many on this island, so we're kind of fortunate. But let's kill them. Yeah, many times I've, I've walked up to do a quest like this and just, you know, hit one Murloc, and the next thing you know, ten of them come running from around the tree or out of the water, and, and you can get overwhelmed and killed pretty easily. I think a lot of people's first death in the game comes from their first encounter with Murlocs. See how fast they respawn? Respawn means after you kill it and it disappears, how fast does it come back? And Murlocs respawn timer is generally so quick that... Oh, see? <laughs> you can't get away from them. Because as soon as you kill one, another one respawns and you end up fighting and trying to run until... Like there, see? Oops, I shot the wrong one because bad tab target because I'm a hunter. That's what we do. Alright, let's get out of here before they respawn again. Yeah, that's cl classic Murloc. And there's a wolf over there, but I'm not going to tame that one because there's some white wolves up later on that will be cool looking. So we'll just grab one of those. Now we've got William Pestle's crafting mats, so let's go turn this in. We're going to bring the invisibility potion back to Mabel, and she'll be all happy. She'll have to go see Tommy. How are you? See you later. Oh wait, we have to actually wait while well, he mixes it. Don't just run out of the room because then we won't get the next quest. There we go. All right, let's bring this girl her potion. You know, it would have been nice if we could just have a nice, calm, reasoned conversation with her father, but clearly that's not going to work. So we'll resort to magic. Just going to dodge the spider. He'll leave us alone eventually. There's the farm off in the distance. There's some kobolds. Let's go around them. Beautiful forest. This is called Elwyn Forest. It's a really nice, happy place in the game. Alright, Mabel's over here in her house. You can see the question mark on the map. Alright, there's your potion. See you later. Have fun. Alright, she's gonna go meet with her boyfriend and be very happy. Now, the next set of quests happens 
uh, good distance up the road. So we're going to head that way and get to the East Vale Logging Camp, which will be the base for our next series of quests. And that will probably end this episode. It's been over half an hour so far. Um, right, so we tamed a bear. Showed you how to do that. I'm going to grab a wolf in the next episode because they're up ahead. Um, and we did character customization and how to transmog your gear. All kinds of cool things. And we even leveled a little bit. Because that seems to be lowest on the priority pole when you're playing casual style. You have to look good, you have to be able to fish, and you have to have a cool pet. So we got those th things covered. Everything else is secondary, right? Sort of. Now, what I could have showed you is the person that gave us this quest, Marshall Dugan, you know, the guy back in Goldshire who's always uptight. If you talk to him for this quest, he will put you on a Stormwind Steed, an armored horse that will run you down this road for you, which is kind of nice because then you don't have to sit here and drive. But it doesn't get there any faster than this, so we'll just do this for now. It is a bit of a long road, but it's pretty. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. There's a wizard tower over there to our left. I feel like a tour guide. And up ahead on the left, you'll notice the wizard tower of 2004. Which, there used to be a quest to go in there, but they pared down all of the start zone quests. Um, like, when, remember when we did Aldrasil in on the tree? And there were just a handful of quests before we were running off to Dolinar. There used to be a lot more quests, and it used to take a lot longer to get them all done. Um, but instead, because as, as the expansions came out, and you went from 60 being a level, level cap to 80 to 90 to now it's 120, um, you don't want to spend a lot of time in the start zone. You gotta get going. So they took out basically half the quest in all the start zones. Which I understand, but it's also kind of sad because some of them were pretty epic. Uh, Northshire Abbey, which is the human start zone, had a start quest where you had to go pick grapes from the, the vines. Um, and it was really hard because there were some really tough, tough monsters around there. And you had to be very careful. You couldn't just run in and grab your grapes and run out because you would get jumped and you'd get mobbed and killed. <laughs> but they took all that out and made it super easy so now it's almost impossible to die in the start zone. So it's kind of sad because the challenge is gone. It was one heck of an entry into the game. Alright, we're going to... I was going to run and do that quest but we're actually going to stop here for now and end this episode. And in the next one, we're going to get the Eastvale Logging Camp's quests all done up. We're going to get our wolf pet and go explore the Jasper Road Mine, because that'll be fun. <laughs> but there's a lot to do. We have a long way to go. So thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe down below. And don't forget to check out my podcast and all the true crime things I do. I've got my fingers in a lot of different projects. So this might be something you'll find else that'll interest you around here. And hopefully I will talk to you soon. So thanks for watching and take care.